Hey, it's absolutely great to have you here today. I've got the video that you've been waiting for on shallowing. Now we all see pros out there just perfectly shallowing the club, hitting these long, consistent shots, and you probably even notice the best players at your club are shallowing out the, the golf club in the downswing too. But there's a problem here. When we try to shallow out the club ourselves, when you try to shallow it out, often it results in a big, massive block to the right, a block slice, a bad shot. So what the heck causes that? Why is it so easy for some players and so hard for others? Well, there's one thing that you have to get right before you shallow it that makes all the difference. And I also have a great tool that I'm gonna show you further on in this video is gonna help you to know if you're shallowing it perfectly every time. So first let's get into what the heck even is shallowing? You'll see some people will tell you that shallowing out the club means that we're gonna take it back flatter and more to the inside, kind of shallow it out like this, more around our body. Other people will tell you to shallow out the club, you have to kind of bow this lead wrist and have the club kind of pointing over behind your body at the top of the swing. Well, in reality, neither of those things are shallowing. And when I studied over 100 PGA Tour players and measured their shallowing, what I found is some pros and great ball strikers, some of the world's best, are gonna take the club back a little more vertical. Some players are gonna take it back a little flatter. Some players are gonna have a bowed left wrist or lead wrist and that club laid off at the top. Kind of think about like John Rahm, somebody like that. Some players are gonna have a flat wrist and even be across the line at the top. Now these aren't just average players. These are some of the best ball strikers in the world that are doing both of those. So if that's not shallowing, what is shallowing? Well, when I found, when I tested the players, we can draw a simple line on there that I call the shallowing line. And all you have to do is set up your camera to where it's shooting through your elbows at the target in the distance. I'm gonna draw a line at address going straight through my golf ball up through the middle of my right forearm about elbow height. And that gives me a, what I call the shallowing line. Now, when I measured all these pros, when they made a swing, when their club was about head high in the downswing, so about the height of their head in the downswing, their club head or the center of this club was below that line. Now, some pros were an inch below it, some pros were a foot below it, but the real key there is that you have to be below this line. So why does that matter? Why would it make a difference if pros are above the line or below the line? Well, it has to actually do with physics and how the forces are going into the club. You see, if I'm below this line, you can imagine that I'm just gonna take this club and really exaggerate. Well, if I go ahead and pull my hand down, just like a normal golf swing, you can see that wants to kick the club back out in front of my body, and it wants the face to start to square up. So it actually helps the face to square up, and it helps to get the club back out in front of me so it doesn't get stuck underneath behind me. Now, if I do that same thing here, and instead of flattening the club, I get it really steep, and on this side of the line, really exaggerated there. If I make the exact same hand path, the same hand movement, all of a sudden this club wants to fall in behind me. Now, that falling in behind makes the face want to open up. It makes me want to chunk in behind the golf ball, leads to blocks to the right, all kinds of crazy stuff like that, which we obviously don't want. Now, that's a big key. You have to be able to shallow the club out, and we know now, if I draw that shallowing line, I just gotta get the club below that line when my club head is about head high. So how the heck do we do it? What's an easy way to do it? Well, number one is we gotta square up the face. Now, a lot of times what I'll see players doing when they make a swing is they'll have the face very open. So they're coming down steep, and the face is pretty much in a good position. When I measure these pros and best ball strikers, the face was roughly perpendicular to the ground. It could be a little open, a little closed, but when it's head high in the downswing, their club face is perpendicular to the ground. Now, if I'm coming down steep, but my face is in a pretty good position, well, what happens when I shallow it out? All of a sudden, if I take this club inside and I get it more flatter or behind my body in the downswing, but I haven't learned to square that face, I was in a good face position, but I start to shallow it out and now all of a sudden the face is wide open. Now, if we're coming into the downswing with a wide open face like this, what's gonna happen? We're gonna block it a mile to the right. So the first key, the first thing you have to do before you shallow the club is you just have to realize one of the reasons that you're steepening the club is to try to square that club face up. And when you start to shallow it out, you're opening the club face, not doing what the pros are doing, and it's blocking to the right. Here's a real simple drill to get that face squared up first before we shallow, once we square the face up, then we're gonna, it's gonna make sense to shallow it. So if I make a little downswing here, where I pause kind of halfway down, what I wanna do when my club's at kind of last parallel to the ground in the downswing, so that my club shaft is parallel to the ground all the way down here where I'm about to hit the ball, I wanna make sure that this club face is a little closed. 
a lot of times when people shallow it, again, they're not aware of how to square the club face, they shallow the shaft out, faces up toward the sky. When they get down here, the face is in this position, and there's really just no way to square it up from there. There's not enough time to square the face up. What the pros are doing is in this position, they're closing the face down a little bit, and I could do that either by strengthening my grip, meaning I take a little, I turn my hands a little more this way. I can also do that by feeling like I rotate the hands down, almost like I'm doing this with my hands in the downswing. But one way or another, I need to get this toe of the club basically perpendicular to the ground or a little bit close to that in the downswing. Now, once I'm in that position, all of a sudden it makes sense to swing from the inside and shallow the club out. So when I shallow it now and I pause head high, look at that club face perpendicular to the ground. So that's why it's so important, critical, to square the club face first. If the face is open, the more you shallow it, the worse it's gonna get. Because every degree you shallow the shaft, it opens the club face a degree too. So if you're struggling blocking them to the right, that's the cause. Do about 10 or 15 swings, where you kind of pause here, close club face, pause here, close club face, and then try to feel that same thing when you make a swing and hit a ball. Now you should see when you do that, this ball should start to draw or to even hook a little bit. Let me try that out. There we go, and that ball came out drawing quite a bit. That's okay. Once I close that club face first, I'm ready to get from the inside. Now let me give you an awesome training aid that's gonna make this really simple for you. All right, so this is what I call the brick. This is a training aid that I developed over about a year and a half. And what I did is I took actual PJ Tour data for their vertical swing plane through impact, meaning that how is their club head moving through impact? What angle is that on? Imagine kind of a sheet of glass that's at an angle. What is their actual angle? Well, I measured that, found out that pros are extremely consistent on those angles, and I have three settings here. So if you have the brick, you go ahead and go to the shallowing setting on the top, put it in the driver, written driver today, and then I'm gonna put on the shallowing setting on the side a stick that lines up toward my target. That's all you have to do to get it perfectly set up. I'm then gonna set my golf ball about six to eight inches inside of this alignment stick that's going toward my target. And now I know that if I'm shallowing it out correctly, I'll be kind of matching that angle of the stick on the downswing, missing the stick to the inside as I come through, and then hitting it nice and square. Now if you've already done the drills to square up the face, now it's really simple, because all I have to do is swing and miss this stick and I know I'm shallowing it out. So you don't have to guess is that enough shallowing? Have I done it right? Have I done it wrong? This gives you the perfect angle based on real tour players' data. So from here, the great thing about this is called interference practice. So if I put a giant stick in the way, that really is gonna make it to where it doesn't make any sense at all to start coming down steep and whacking into the stick. I found when you put a, an obstacle in the way, people shift their swing pretty quickly. So we could take six months of lessons trying to shallow it out, or we could just put this giant stick here that says, hey, this is what you have to miss to shallow it out. And I find people self-organize pretty quickly. So from here, I'm gonna work on those same positions. I'm gonna go halfway down, make sure my club face is a little closed there. Say, okay, that feels good. I feel like I'm gonna miss the stick. And then from there, I can just go ahead and hit drivers, swing the inside of the stick, and I know I'm shallowing it out perfectly. There we go, hit that one pretty good. So if you want your brick, Go ahead and go to the video down below this. There's a description down below this video. You can click the link there. Uh, we have been selling out crazy fast on these. Hopefully they're in stock, but just click that link. Or if you don't see that link, go ahead and click the card somewhere up on the top right side of your screen. You'll see a little card that pops up there. You'll be able to take it to our website to get your very own brick. And you don't have to guess about shallowing anymore. It's gonna solve it for you once and for all. Best of luck and I'll see you soon.